بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ایوری باڈی اینڈ اسلام علیکم سو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ آر لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی ٹو اینڈ دیٹ از اباؤٹ رسک مینجمنٹ فریم ورک ویل بائی دس ٹائم وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ سو مینی کانسٹرینٹس اینڈ وی ہیو کمپلیٹیڈ تھری آف دم سکسیزفلی آئی تھنک اینڈ دوز وار اسکوپ مینجمنٹ ٹائم مینجمنٹ اینڈ کاسٹ مینجمنٹ So, uh, as far as uh, the complex projects are concerned, we have discussed that the number of constraints uh, are increasing for that uh, particular uh, type of uh, uh, project. Uh, and uh, when we are uh, actually uh, managing the simple project, we are having uh, kind of lesser effort than on complex projects. And then level uh, of information, the detailing, uh, and stuff like that is quite different. So one mm, very important uh, constraint, which is uh, uh, though considered on simple projects as well, but uh, its importance uh, gets uh, uh, very much fo uh, you know, uh, increased uh, by uh, the uh, complex projects, and that is risk. So risk, we are going to talk about uh, risk, risk management framework and stuff like that in upcoming few sessions. And uh, yeah, we will be focusing on the complete risk management uh, of uh, projects, okay? So let's start with uh, the summary of the previous lecture. So, mm, okay, we had uh, talked about uh, how to estimate the cost and uh, different types of estimates and uh, estimation methodologies and techniques. And then we had uh, learned how to develop a budget. So cost estimate, cost budget was done in those part of uh, our course. Then uh, we had learned how to actually um, calculate the duration of your project and how to develop a work schedule. And uh, uh, we have learned uh, these two methods, that is CPM and PER technique. Uh, and uh, uh, we had uh, talked about uh, network diagrams as well. So uh, defining activities uh, and then sequencing them and uh, estimating the resources and then uh, estimating the duration of activities and then developing the schedule. And we have uh, done in uh, sessions. And then we had reached uh, where uh, we were having that WPS and we had used WPS for costing and uh, estimation of the time. Uh, then we had mm, uh, actually, you know, coupled all of these into uh, one thing and that is called earned value management. So we had uh, learned how to control the schedule and cost and scope through one integrated tool. So uh, there were four processes of cost management. Three were discussed in earlier. Similarly, there are seven processes of time management, and six of them were discussed uh, in earlier. And then the seventh one and the fourth process of the cost management was discussed in, in that very session, and that is about earned value management. So uh, by completing all the theoretical part, then we had come to uh, the practical part, and that is uh, to do some uh, case studies. So the other day we were uh, talking about the case study of network diagram, and the case study of CPM, and the case study of PERD, uh, and uh, the case study of uh, earned value management. Uh, so uh, today we are going to start our new lecture, and that is about risk. So before we uh, can start our today's lecture, let's have the definition of risk. What is risk? So people, uh, many people do have different understanding of the risk, okay? Uh, so most of the people, they call risk as a negative uh, event. Uh, uh, but uh, as far as project risk is concerned, uh, and PMI's definition is concerned, uh, the positive and negative, both events may be attributed to a risk. Uh, so risk may be a positive one and negative one. But when you, you come through uh, the definition of risk from different literatures, you may come across mm, uh, uh, the definition of risk as a negative event, right? Uh, most of the time, yes, we do have this mind uh, uh, set or framework that we do take you know, risk as a negative event. Uh, 
Now, but that become a positive event as well. So, um, uh, as far as PMI's definition is concerned, project risk is an uncertain event or condition that if it occurs, uh, has a positive or a negative effect on a project's objective. And again, there are two or uh, three buzzwords. Let's uh, highlight them over there in the slide. So you can have this uncertain uh, thing. So if you are you are not certain about the things and this thing uh, has happened. Now, uh, through that uncertain, what do I mean is, uh, yes, you do know that this uh, event is maybe happening, OK? So uh, there is one dimension to the risk, and that is uh, the probability. and the likelihood, OK? So this event may happen or may not happen, right? So you are not sure of that event, OK? So if you are sure of, 100% sure that this will happen, then this, that, that is not a risk. That is a fact. So you should be able to identify the difference between a risk and a fact. So fact is having 100% probability. And that is fact. So uh, if you are having, mm, uh, if you have to complete one activity of your project, and the activity is you have to construct 100 meter long wall, uh, well, that is a fact. That is not a, uh, a risk. Okay. So, but there are few things you actually uh, have with you before you actually start working on that, uh, and that is, okay. If we get bricks, then we will construct that uh, wall. And if we do get a cement, then we will construct that wall. Now, these ifs are there. So these ifs are actually putting a question mark to their thing. 100% probability. So whenever you are putting some if, you are actually putting a constraint. And when you are putting constraint and the definition of constraint, we are going through that definition in uh, upcoming slides. But what is the constraint? Anything which actually limits um, the ability of project team uh, uh, for uh, better management. Uh, that puts a put uh, put some bar on the ability of the project team to manage the project. So, so you are saying if that is happening then, if then, if then. Now, if you, you are having so many ifs, actually you are uh, basing your uh, working on some assumptions, OK? So that, that is called assumptions, OK? So that has to be done. That has to be done. That is called assumption. Whatever you so you want to construct that um, a wall, so that is a fact, and uh, that wall will, will be completed if cement arrives and if mm, bricks arrive uh, on the site. So these are uh, these two activities needed to happen uh, so that we can construct a wall. So mm, these two events are assumptions. Okay, so which are required to happen uh, for or uh, not to happen if whatever you have assumed. Okay, so risk is the third thing. Risk is different than assumption. Risk may or may not happen. Okay, so there is a probability of happening and there is probability of not happening. For uh, mm, assumptions, that those must happen. And fact is, uh, you have to complete that. So this is the uh, basic difference uh, between uh, the assumption, the fact, and the risk. So you should be very clear about these concepts, OK, if you want to uh, have a better understanding of risk management. Uh, well, uh, this, is about, this was about uncertain event, OK? And now, has a positive or negative effect but that is on project's objective. 
that is very 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 important part of this definition so um, uh, remember one very clear thing we are going to talk this thing in later parts of our slides uh, risk only exists uh, in relation uh, to in relation to uh, some project objective okay so if there is some event which if occurs can actually uh, destabilize the economy of the country or political situation of the uh, country or some uh, judicial um, uh, situation of the country but that situation or even does not have any impact on your projects activity or objectives then you are not bothered about uh, what is happening over there so let's have a very good example if uh, you are doing this uh, project and uh, uh, one of the client uh, is uh, uh, one of uh, um, uh, the individual who is actually launching a business, uh, he is uh, uh, back from some uh, Arab countries and he has the money with him or her and uh, he, he uh, comes to Pakistan and wants to establish a business and you are actually working for that guy and this guy has paid you 100% advance uh, for the development of a website and uh, your project is to develop a website uh, while you have you are actually working for that 100% payment or 50% payment has been uh, and then there has happened that the government uh, regime is been changing okay so uh, what will be the big effect on your project I mean uh, you both ha are having some contract with each other okay and that contract uh, is not uh, affected by that political change uh, and this guy uh, ha is ha if you are delivering your project this guy has to pay you okay according to the contract conditions but then there is another uh, setup you are constructing uh, this 100 kilometer of road and that road is running through some land um, and uh, the government changes and uh, what happens then uh, now the new government they have drawn the sponsorship of that project so uh, again uh, that your project may be suffering from that thing uh, by that time same regime change is a risk but for earlier project that was not a risk because in earlier case that event was not affecting the project objectives but in second uh, case uh, the same regime change is affecting project objectives so this is the concept of uh, how any event can actually have impact and impact or effect can be positive and negative so you are constructing that 100 kilometer of road and the new government uh, is uh, has taken uh, the charge Mm, and uh, uh, one of the minister uh, has uh, taken the notice of the project you are actually working on and you are working for the contractor side let's say and uh, this guy is uh, very uh, you know mm, is a visionary type of guy and uh, he actually presides a meeting and um, says okay so you are go doing good job well done you are uh, within your budget and you are head of your schedule but I just want to have another idea. Why don't we actually extend this uh, 100 kilometer to uh, 150 kilometers so that we can have better access to XYZ uh, city? And in that case, our benefits may be increased. The internal rate of return may be increased. Uh, the um, uh, benefits uh, we are anticipating can be materialized earlier, and uh, net present value can be increased. By that time, this minister is actually offering you an opportunity. What should the project manager sitting over there uh, should do? Straight away refusal? No, sir, we cannot. We, we have very good planning document with us. Uh, so if we take up this additional task, we have to. No, we do not uh, talk like that. Over there, your project management plan should have the provision to accept such a risk, and that is positive risk. Okay, so uh, the risk may be very positive, or the same minister may say that okay, you are working you know, on 100 kilometer road. I want to curtail it to 50 kilometers because next 50 kilometers is of no use. Uh, then yes, you have another plan. Okay, if uh, scope has been cut, your profits are actually been reduced, uh, or in a worst case, uh, you have actually. Uh, 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 had uh, you have had a break even analysis and your profit uh, 
uh, war to start after uh, the construction of 60 kilometers. But he is actually putting a bar to 50 kilometers. So you are actually uh, uh, been uh, not able to. By that time, you, you are in need to have something with you so that you can uh, avoid that type of risk. Okay. So uh, I think I have talked uh, uh, in good detail about project risk definition. Let's move ahead. How to actually uh, conclude uh, to such uh, conclusions? What I've, uh, whatever I'm actually talking about, uh, can you reach to these arguments? Okay, so let's try to reach to that destination where you can have your own arguments uh, for about uh, for risk management and about risk uh, thing. So yes, uh, we have already talked about that, and that is the definition of risk, and that includes two things: uh, uncertainty and effect on project objective. And we have talked in detail, so we are just. Uh, Yes, uh, that is very true. Uh, risk is unavoidable. Uh, you, you cannot simply avoid that. Okay? Most of the time, you can uh, reduce the probability. Uh, most of the time, yes, you can reduce the impact. Uh, but most of the time, you cannot simply deny this reality that risk actually uh, uh, exists. Okay? And uh, there are a few studies that you can uh, enhance the chances of the, uh, uh, success of your project by 90 percent. But uh, having this belief that risk is unavoidable, you should first have to understand and admit the very existence of the risk. So um, there is always uh, at least some level of uncertainty in a project's outcome. So uh, uh, every project is uh, unique, and uh, we are going to have a slide of uh, why uh, project risk is unavoidable. So uniqueness is such a thing uh, which actually leads to uh, the point uh, that uh, project outcomes may be quite different. Uh, and very important part, uh, engineering projects are, you know, extreme engineering. You must have seen the videos of extreme engineering on uh, National Geographic or stuff like that. They are actually uh, constructing hundreds of uh, kilometers of uh, bridges on, uh, in ocean and um, seas. Uh, and they are actually constructing these huge um, um, uh, reclaimed lands from the sea projects and uh, skyscrapers of kilometer height and stuff like that. But um, they are very matured. Uh, engineering projects are very matured. Engineering has been uh, getting so matured, the so in, uh, and uh, thanks to the advances in uh, software engineering, uh, the civil engineering and mechanical engineering and electrical engineering and uh, all the fields of engineering, they are getting so matured. And modeling, uh, modeling has been done, and engineers are working throughout uh, the globe you know, for even maturing these uh, things. But as far as social projects are concerned, they are undertakings which relate to people. And people are so unpredictable most of the time. Uh, one time, I enter my office. I'm so happy. Uh, the other day, I may enter with the same circumstances uh, in the uh, morning. Uh, but I may not be that uh, feeling high the other day. So, that, so I, I may act differently on different occasions. So, when you are talking about social projects, then there is not a single individual. There are a lot of uh, people uh, around there, even in thousands. So managing a, people, uh, uh, a list of uh, people like 100 people is quite a different thing than managing 10,000 people. You know, So uh, social projects are kind of uh, risky. And there are some other reasons for that, why these are risky. Because uh, we had two definitions, and that is uncertainty and uh, impact on the objectives. And we have talked about uh, mm, uh, why they are uncertain. But the other thing that is the impact on project objective. And project objectives are not that clear uh, as far as social projects are concerned. So those are not very objective. So you want to enhance the living standard. What do you mean by enhance? Uh, like for me, I have different uh, set of objective values for, uh, the def for, for the definition of enhancement. You people may have different definition of enhancement of life. For me, 
uh, everybody should be paid, uh, minimum pay should be paid like 1 lakh rupees, okay? And uh, the spending f should not be increased uh, beyond 50% of the salary of a common man. Or some people may say that, okay, uh, 8,000 rupees uh, or 9,000 rupees uh, minimum wage set by the government is uh, uh, cruelty with the uh, investors and stuff like that, you know. So many people to have different understanding of the uh, uh, objectives. Uh, they do have different uh, objectives. They, had, they do have uh, different understandings of the outcomes. So at most of the times, the outcomes are not that tangible. By that time, and in that case, uh, th th these projects are becoming kind of uh, risky. And technological projects, you do not know what you are going to achieve. You do have a very good idea over there, but you know, you do not know the process. If you do know the process, why this technological project then? This is a common industrial or engineering or social project, you know? So, uh, so these are a few things. And risk on technological and social projects are significant and their numbers and severity increases. Uh, okay, so oh, that was about risk and uh, risk uh, uh, management. Now we are going to talk about uh, project risk management includes the processes of conducting risk uh, management planning, identification, analysis, response planning, and controlling uh, of the risks on a project. Uh, so um, the objective of project risk management are to increase the probability uh, and impact and or We should put R and or So either you actually, this is very good if you can increase the probability and impact of the positive events or you should at least uh, be increasing uh, the, either the probability or impact of the positive events and decrease the probability and or impact of negative events in the project. So this is all about project risk management. So uh, over there we are attending, there are two parts, uh, there are two components, so there are um, which are actually manifest uh, manifesting uh, the, um, the definition of risk, and that is the objectives and the uh, impact on, on the objectives and the probability. So we want to increase both for the positive events, and we want to decrease uh, both or single one for negative events. So that is project risk management. Uh, importance and uh, uh, yes, that is very important and it adds the perspective of uh, project risk to outputs of other processes and adds to their value by taking risk into account. So you have done by this time uh, costing and costing in costing you have, you were able to develop estimates and you are able to develop budgets and you are able to have controlling system and then you, you've done time, time management and similarly you have uh, activity lists, so you have uh, mm, sequencing, you have schedule, you have time duration of each activity, you have total duration of your project. But what if I tell you that uh, you are not doing good by that point in time? Uh, so your estimate is an estimate, and estimate is an estimate, you know. So that can have some accuracy. Remember the type of estimates we were talking about, so ROM estimate, that is having plus minus 35% accuracy. So if you are having like estimate of 20 million, then what would be the plus minus 35% of that? Okay, let's change that you are actually referring to the accuracy uh, like you are in need of whether 65 or 135. Over there you are actually referring to 70 million range from 65 to 135. So see how uncertain you are about your estimate. So what if we can eliminate that? Uh, uncertainty through uh, proper risk management. Now that is the importance of mm, risk management. At that time, you were doing this part 
part uh, technique and um, again the part technique is about basically a tool of risk management so part is not a tool of time management only that is actually a tool of eliminating our risk so having that discrete number our project will be completed in 57 days is one thing but having uh, a range actually gives you very good idea so you then say that okay I am going to complete my project within 50 to 65 days now that is a better understanding now you can actually plan the things accordingly and uh, then uh, you you are avoiding some embarrassment in front of the customer and the senior management so uh, having that range is quite helpful for you so risk management provides the basis upon which to estimate the amount of cost and schedule contingency reserves that are needed to cover risk response actions to require level of confidence for meeting project objectives so that is a uh, kind of help it actually uh, gives you and when and where to apply project risk management only to complex projects my question is should we apply risk management only to complex projects? the answer is no but we will be using the same risk management for simple projects as well as on complex projects but the level of effort uh, would have been quite different okay so uh, so the degree level of detail sophistication of tools and amount of time and resources applied to project risk management should be in proportion to the characteristic of the project under management and the value that can add to the outcome so this is uh, the basic difference of risk management as far as complex projects is concerned and simple project is concerned uh, so there are a few critical factors which actually contribute for uh, success of uh, project risk management concept on a particular project so these are few components elements you may have another elements as well so uh, first thing is recognizing the value of risk management mm, so if an organization is not aware of the importance of risk management uh, the, and they are actually taking up this project and the project management wants to uh, mm, implement risk management uh, knowledge over there but the organization does not buy that uh, then by that time risk management success will be having that big question mark okay so mm, uh, recognition of the value of risk management among the stakeholders should be prevalent and uh, available and then how much you are committed to carry out that risk management for a project uh, so whether if you are a sponsor or you are a project manager or you are a team member or you are working on risk management team uh, your commitment and dedication uh, is very much uh, 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 should be there uh, if you want to have uh, risk management success and then uh, there should be responsibility one should be uh, responsible for the proper risk management okay and uh, very 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 important very very important part and that is open and honest communication so if you are having few stakeholders this is not going to happen that you are giving some information to one stakeholder and, and lesser information to second stakeholder and you are expecting the same results from both of them you know so mm, yes on project you do not give all that information to one particular stakeholder but you should give adequate and very open and honest information uh, to one stakeholder because that stakeholder will actually uh, help you in succeeding uh, in risk management concept uh, we have talked about organizational commitment and uh, then um, scale a risk effort uh, to project uh, now that is the point okay so uh, we have a, a simple project and a smaller project and we have different big project okay so let's say one project is five marla construction house construction of a house and the another one is uh, 20 story building on a commercial market 
so uh, accordingly you will have different uh, level of effort for uh, 5 mile house and uh, for 20 uh, building stro 20 story building okay so you should scale your efforts uh, according to your project so for a uh, simple project you may have one a very good uh, risk register and uh, qualitative analysis and that's it and you have responses and stuff like that one picture is quite enough but when it comes to this 20 story building you may have a document or even a book uh, of uh, 200 pages of, uh, to better manage uh, the risk okay uh, then um, isolation uh, is a curse for as far as risk management is concerned risk management itself does not do anything uh, if you are actually taking up the risk management in isolation uh, from other project management uh, areas, then you are not doing good. Um, uh, if you are not improving your costing, if you are not improving your times, if you are not improving the quality or HR issues or communications or procurements, then what's the big deal uh, doing that risk management, right? So you have to integrate your uh, risk management with other project management areas. Okay, so uh, there are two types uh, uh, of uh, you know, risks as far as categories are concerned. So risk can be divided in pure risk and speculative risk. So the pure risks are those uh, which uh, um, uh, bring only loss uh, but no benefit. They can occur repeatedly. Um, uh, Speculative risks, uh, risk which may bring loss and benefit as well, they have little probability to repeat. Uh, so uh, the other example, I was actually telling you uh, that extension of the scope while you are having high profit margin per cubic meter or per uh, increase in the length. Uh, per, um, there are other risks like uh, uh, um, some accident on site or stuff like that. Uh, then um, that those risks are pure risk. The first I've talked about is speculative risk. Okay, uh, let's have a uh, uh, brief description of individual risk. So individual risks, risks are specific events or conditions that might affect project objectives. And individual risk uh, may positively uh, or negatively affect one or more of the project objectives, elements or tasks. So uh, anything uh, which is uh, like uh, one uh, risk may be the price hike of construction materials. Uh, maybe one risk or if you specify more objectively, the price hike in, uh, of the steel uh, uh, which, which was to be used in activity X, Y, and Z, right? So that is a risk. So that is called individual risk. Now that uh, risk actually is affecting your one objective and that is cost. So understanding individual risk uh, can assist in determining how to apply effort and resources to enhance the chances of project success. Day-to-day -day project risk uh, management focuses on these individual risks in order to enhance the prospects of successful project outcomes. So what you have to do then? Uh, so prices getting hiked or increased, uh, but one of the uh, guy who is actually running this steel mill uh, is uh, one uh, which has which ha which has uh, 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 quite a working relationship with you and for decades. And now, if you actually go over there and uh, have some negotiation, well, we want to buy this thing. Can you give us some subsidized material? So most of the cases, yes, they do. Because you are very uh, good uh, clientage, uh, uh, you are having very good clientage with that guy. So this guy is very much happy with you. <coughs> uh, you enhance uh, your uh, option. And similarly, through negotiation, so through interpersonal skills, and or you can actually uh, procure uh, you you are having some uh, uh, arrangement well the prices are in getting increased in Islamabad uh, let's say uh, because there are two or three bridges are under construction and uh, there are uh, two buildings which are taken up by the government in recent times so that's why the demand is high the prices are getting 
required if there is uh, you know uh, in uh, one um, uh, unit in jhelum and uh, let's say we are supposing that thing um, uh, the demand is quite low and the production uh, is quite low over there so if we can buy steel from that what we have to pay is additional free charges so that the steel can be brought now let's have an, an analysis should we go over there kya hame wahan jana chahiye kya hame wo agar hum wahan se leke aate hain to hame per ton cost kya padegi transportation ki agar wo hum add karte hain tonnage ke per ton rate ke sath let's say initially aapko jo islamabad mein steel mil raha hai wo mil raha hai 80000 rupees ka per ton aur jo jhelum se mil raha hai wo mil raha hai 60000 rupees ka per ton and we are assuming these figures okay and um the uh, transportation charges are like no what uh, up to 100 ton and 10000 per ton up to uh 50 20 to 50 ton and uh, 20000 per ton up to 10 to 20 ton and um 30000 per ton for uh, up to 10 ton so now you have to make a uh, 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 understanding if you are buying 10 tons so your rate will be 60 plus 30000 that is 90 ton 90000 per ton but you are having this 80000 from islamabad so you will go over there and you will buy from islamabad but if you in increase and then you anticipate that okay uh, our need is kind of uh, 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 45 uh, ton and if we can actually the steel cannot decoy or we can use this in upcoming very uh, in near future project so what we are going to do is we will have 51 ton of steel from that and uh, by that time uh, we will be having like uh, uh, 65000 uh, rupees per ton uh, and these uh, this 6 uh, ton will be used in next project so this is what you are actually doing in uh, day to day uh, risk response uh, planning okay uh, then uh, there is a second type and that is overall uh, project risk overall uh, project risk represents the effect of uncertainty on the project as a whole uh, overall project risk represents the exposure of stakeholders to implications of variation in project outcome and one very good example is uh, if uh, your company has uh, Mm, committed uh, financial resources and uh, 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 you are actually having uh, this uh, planned that you will uh, take the money at the rate of uh, 18% and out of this 80 per 18% 12% uh, is uh, the interest rate stated by the state bank Uh, uh, people call it uh, libor or stuff like that okay so 10% is uh, uh, government tag, uh, government uh, interest of uh, uh, state banks state bank uh, rate of interest and then 6% is the cost of money by bank what if uh, state bank increases uh, the interest rate from 12 to 13 or what if they decrease uh, this thing 12 to 7% this is an opportunity this is a uh, uh, threat so you have to uh, you have to uh, consider these thing now this one event which has if happen uh, is having impact of overall project so that is a very good example of overall project risk uh one another good example would be uh, 
uh, strategic decision making. So uh, you are a project manager of a one project, or your uh, project time ke upar ja hai, cost ke upar ja hai, lekin uski strategic fit nahi raha. Jis objectives ko karne ke liye wo project kiya ja raha tha, wo aapki organization ki top management ne un objectives ko reconsider kiya. Ab aapka project wahan itna strategic. Now this is overall project risk. The, uh, so considering a project for strategic fit is, a, uh, is an overall project risk. So it is an important component of strategic decision making, program and portfolio management and project governance where investments are sanctioned or cancelled and priorities were set. So this, there is a difference between uh, individual uh, uh, project risk and overall project risk and I hope you, you have learned the difference between those. Okay, so uh, stakeholder risk attitude, this is uh, another very important uh, thing. Uh, the risk attitudes of the project stakeholders determine the extent to which an individual risk or overall project risk matters. Uh, a wide range of factors influencing uh, risk attitudes are uh, the scale of the project within the range of stakeholders overall activities. So the scale is more the scale uh, is more the larger project you are having the stakeholders are more concerned about risk management so you are having small project uh, kind of uh, you have uh, worked on 50 projects uh, before that then very fine Th then uh, risk management uh, uh, the stakeholders attitude towards risk is not that uh, they are saying okay you have done that thing uh, before so you you must be doing this thing again uh, the strength of public commitments made about the performance of the project. And so, um, uh, public commitments, um, if they are uh, very much there, then project uh, 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 will be having a limelight, hence project uh, risks should be given proper or due consideration. The stakeholder sensitivity to issues such as environmental impact, industry relations and other factors so one of the stakeholder is uh, from your internal stakeholder of your organization and is actually from engineering side and uh, one of the stakeholder uh, is from finance side so they are constructing a road and the finance guy is very much concerned about the risks related to financial matters the engineer uh, is very much concerned about the technical risks see so people uh, they do have their background uh, knowledge with them uh, they they are having different uh, attitudes towards uh, different uh, type of risk basing on their uh, understanding of the things. So stakeholder risk attitude usually result in a desire for increased certainty in project outcomes. So um, uh, they actually want project to become more certain. So that's why they they act like that. How risk, risk is regarded is usually also strongly influenced by the organization's culture. Different organizations are more or less open and uh, this often impacts the way risk management can be applied. So if uh, an organization is very open, then risk management will be quite success story over there. But if some uh, organization is not uh, that open, so uh, the communication may, be very, may not be that open or honest, then risk management will suffer. So the attitudes may differ from one project uh, to another for the same stakeholders uh, and will usually differ from one group of stakeholders to another. We have talked about, so financial uh, guy will be talking all about risk or risk about costing and finances. The engineering guy, that uh, he uh, or she may be uh, talking all about the technicalities of the things. So different people uh, having their background knowledge will uh, try to influence uh, the decisions or um, you know, which they actually relate to them. So in fact, a single stakeholder, now that is very important, uh, may adopt different risk attitude at various stages uh, in the same project. Um, even a project manager may have, uh, because uh, the project is very, very risky in the start. Uh, the project is not uh, 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 risky in uh, that risky in uh, when you uh, get progress uh, through the project because at the start you are you are having least information but when you go beyond that your level of information 
uh, is increased and hence uh, you are actually uh, uh, having good understanding of the things and project is be becomes less risky. So single stakeholder may adopt uh, different risk attitudes uh, at various stages in the same project. So one stakeholder thinks that uh, your project is so risky because you are not actually giving him or her adequate information. The other day you are actually informing with uh, good presentation and stuff like that and the risk level may be reduced and after a month then you again uh, he or she is feeling like uh, I do not know what is happening on the project so project must be very risky or the things may have uh, changed drastically. Uh, uh, so again you are briefing or, or debriefing so stuff like that actually Mm, and uh, similar situations or uh, other some uh, other situations may lead to uh, mm, a different understanding of uh, uh, one stakeholder uh, for risk management. So when should we do the risk management? Uh, in the start, in the end, in uh, during execution, or at the planning stage? So the answer is. Uh, we will keep risk management started as early as possible and this will keep working throughout the project life cycle, okay? So it is a iterative process just like uh, uh, management, uh, project management, okay? So it is the nature of projects that um, circumstances change as they are being planned and executed. The amount of information available about risk will usually increase as time goes on. So for one very risk you have uh, understanding that uh, the probability of that risk is medium and the impact is low. But through information you have uh, devised that uh, the probability is low and impact is as well low. Or then you have come to know okay the probability is high and impact is low. Or then so you see through the project life cycle, you can have different understanding because uh, on the availability of the information about that risk. So some risk will occur while others will not. New risk will arise or to be discovered and the characteristic of those already identified may change. Characteristic you mean probability and impact. As a result, the project risk management processes should be repeated and the corresponding plans progressively elaborated throughout the lifetime of the project. Now the, this wor word is very good buzzword, progressively elaborated. With the passage of time you started elaborating the things, okay? So uh, yes, uh, that is um, project risk management and communication. We have talked about that. Uh, so whenever it comes to risk management, uh, Mm, then uh, communication is very important as well. So project risk management cannot take place in isolation. We have uh, talked about that. Success relies heavily on communication throughout the process. And uh, um, risk identification and analysis depend on uh, comprehensive input from stakeholders in a project to ensure that nothing significant is overlooked and that risks are realistically assessed. Uh, what do you mean by realistically assessed? So people do have uh, biasness uh, towards assessing the risks. So uh, in one session I have asked about uh, um, you know, the risk of uh, falling from uh, uh, construction site, falling from uh, eighth story and the answer was the probability is high and the impact is high. Then, I asked them that you have the probability of high the audience. So, what is it? If you take the the past 10 newspaper and you can see how many events have in Pakistan where there is no project team member, team member, laborer, or a person who has So, what are the chances of uh, so they were having like this clueless uh, 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 look on me uh, because that is not very high probability. But the thing is if somebody is falling from it uh, story, yes impact is huge. That is true. That is very much there. Uh, even may lead to you know death. Okay. So uh, having this thing in their mind, they are 
pushed or they are they were triggered to rate this probability high so there is very different thing the probability is total different thing and impact is total different thing so but uh, people to have this attitude uh, towards uh, assessing or assigning high probabilities of the events which are having high impacts. So while you are uh, working over there as a project manager or risk manager or project team member, you should be having this thing in your mind that the project risk should be realistically assessed and not uh, in such a way. And uh, uh, okay, you can see uh, the um, picture over there, and everybody is pointing a finger to the other guy. So this is not a good thing. I mean, this is not a good. I uh, we should not buy that. Uh, somebody should be uh, responsible for uh, one uh, risk, and uh, then one should be the responsible for overall overall uh, risk. And uh, yes, uh, risk owners are. Uh, they are for every risk, you know. So it is important that uh, uh, management of project risk is not left to a few risk specialists. Uh, then all the stakeholders should be uh, uh, taking the responsibility as well. Everybody should be coming forward and helping those guys. Uh, since project risk can affect project objectives, anyone with an interest in achieving those objectives should play a role in project risk management. Uh, and we have very crystal clear responsibility and uh, authority as far as risk management is concerned. So roles and responsibility uh, for project risk management should be clearly defined and communicated. And individuals should be held responsible and accountable for results. Responsibility should also be allocated for ensuring that risk-related lessons are captured in future use. But that is very important. That is such a curse uh, in our um, prevalent industry. Um, uh, not th those good case studies are available. Uh, the ones who are actually working for projects, they are so much busy working, actually. Uh, they do not have time to write the case studies, and hence, Everything we are gaining or they are gaining through their personal experiences is been lost. So uh, what I will advise you people, the future project managers, you should follow this uh, once upon a time type thing, you know. So uh, good case studies should be written. If you are having one experience, do not think that that is of no use. Uh, one very little thing uh, you have managed may have uh, saved a million uh, for the other guy. So uh, uh, that it should be uh, um, taken care of. For as far as risk management is concerned, the responsibility uh, for risk-related lesson learned capturing for future use should also be part of uh, uh, risk management responsibilities. Okay. Uh, uh, now we are uh, we are having some basic ideas about uh, risk management. Now we are having that. Um, uh, risk management framework. Uh, so one thing is uh, about risk we have talked. All projects are uncertain. So if you can see over there, so that uh, thing is actually, that path is uh, leading to, you do not know what is over there, kind of uncertain um, uh, path. So yes, projects are uncertain. You, you, you can start and you can plan up to that, but you do not know what is actually over there. So that is one characteristic of um, uh, the projects. So uncertainty is inevitable since projects are unique. Yes, uh, you are having that unique thing with you. And temp temporary undertakings uh, based on assumptions and constraints. And delivering project results to multiple stakeholders with different requirements. So uh, different st stakeholders, they, they, they are actually taking up this one project for their own interests, you know. So uh, they are actually pulling up the project resources and stuff like that in their favor. You are over there to mediate and have uh, the things intact. Uh, so, mm, uh, so that actually all the scenario uh, is making your project a bit risky. So when it comes to simple project, you know, uh, okay, uh, lesser stakeholders, um, kind of uh, 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 kind of matured processes available with your organization, and 
quite a thing uh, better understanding of uh, all the stakeholders of your project uh, and they are on same grid uh, what we are going to do that is very simple that is an example of simple project Why, but when you are uh, coming to complex projects okay I may have different opinion of uh, uh, one project uh, you may have different opinion of your uh, f from the same very project uh, and the third guy may have different opinion of uh, the uh, same very project so the number of stakeholders they may be having all uh, different opinions and understanding and requirements and expectation from that project and uh, then your organization may not be having uh, that matured uh, processes to manage that uh, so these are few things which are actually uh, making your projects uncertain and liable for proper risk management so project risk management framework uh, can uh, risk management project management can be seen as attempt to control this uncertain environment through the use of structured and disciplined techniques such as estimating planning controlling task allocation earned value analysis monitoring review meetings etc you know you are putting all these pieces over there into one whole good mass and uh, project risk management is one piece of that very good structured uh, thing you know uh, so it provides an approach by which uncertainty can be understood assessed managed within projects effective project risk management is a critical success factor for project success so the the output from risk management uh, will be should be taken into account within many of the project management processes they can for example impact estimating resource requirement cost and duration we have done one uh, very good example of bird how uh, this uh, uh, analysis actually can have uh, impact on your scheduling similarly we can use that bird technique for the costing as well so assessing the impact of proposed scope changes planning or replanning the forward strategy of the project allocating resources to task and reporting progress to stakeholders so these are a few impacts which can be actually used uh, so over there you can see these people are actually uh, developing something creating manufacturing and they are uh, so the concept is just like uh, the ants uh, they are actually holding something and they are moving to form a very good homogeneous one uh, a good body okay so um, uh, we are uh, we are having basic understanding of risk management risk and uncertainty and objectives and um, and then uh, characteristics um, uh, now we will move towards uh, risk management processes we are going to talk on these in detail in relevant sessions of this very course but over there that is uh, there is a summary of what we are going to talk in upcoming a few sessions okay so risk management uh, processes are as follow uh, what first the first thing is you plan risk management and uh, then you identify risk and then you perform qualitative risk analysis uh, and then you perform quantitative risk analysis and then you plan risk responses and monitor and control remember this is a very straightforward and uh, this is how we proceed so this is only knowledge area as far as PMI is concerned where you can follow all these process in a sequence okay uh, and but then uh, that is repetitive you know uh, after identifying risk you can go over there or over there and after perform qualitative risk you can go over quantitative risk or response or you can go and have some you know uh, watch list or stuff like that so um, that is kind of uh, the process we will be following what do you mean by plan risk management um, well project objectives and project risk uh, as far as planning is concerned project risk is an uncertain event or condition that if it occurs it has positive or negative impact uh, or effect on project outcomes and objectives we do have discussed hence risk only exist in relationship to objectives um, so it is therefore essential at the start of the project risk management process to clearly define the objectives so if you are not having very clear objectives then you are not going to have very good understanding of risks 
and hence risk management will will not give you that uh, good fruits uh, or outputs. So as far as social projects are concerned or technological projects are concerned, they are actually lack over there. So they measurable, clear measurable objectives are quite hard uh, to have for these projects as far as uh, this uh, point in time is concerned. But people are actually working on very uh, these uh, fields. Uh, but uh, this is why these projects are risky. And uh, projects and level of risk, uh, different projects are exposed to different levels of risk. So each step in project risk management process should be scalable to meet uh, the varying degree of risk. Scalable elements of the process include available resources, methodology and processes used, tools and techniques used, supporting infrastructure, review and update frequency, reporting requirements. So uh, according to the uh, project, you are using the effort. And then thresholds. It is important to have clear understanding of the risk thresholds that defines the key stakeholders' views on acceptable level of risk as well as a framework against which identified risk can be assessed. Okay, so summing this thing up, project risk management activities, resources, and attention um, should be appropriate to projects since different projects warrant different levels of risk management application. The main actions to provide the required tailoring are as follows. Define those objectives against which risk will be identified. First step, define how the elements of the project risk management process will be scaled to the project and define risk threshold tolerances and assessment framework. And the first process is planning, uh, plan risk management. It defines the scope and objectives of project risk management process and ensures that the risk process is fully integrated into wider project management. Okay. Uh, and uh, then identify risk. Now, our risk cannot be managed until unless it is first identified. So consequently, after identification, uh, after management, uh, risk management planning has been completed, the first process in the iterative project risk management process aims to identify all the possible and uh, all the knowable risk to project ob objectives. Not all the possible, okay? So that is a uh, wrong word to use over there. So uh, we should be having knowable risks with us. And, and the perform uh, quality, next process is, the third process is perform qualitative risk analysis. So um, uh, the perform qualitative risk analysis process assess the and evaluates the characteristic of individually identified project risk and prioritized risk based on agreed upon characteristics. So if we are having two characteristics, probability and impact, then we will assess uh, the risk identified in identified risk. We are having risk number one, risk two, three, four, five. Let's say five risks, and then now we have to. Uh, assess the characteristic of this risk. So what are the characteristics we are focusing? The probability and impact. So the probability is medium for one, for probability is low for two, high for three, medium for four, and low for uh, five. And then impact, uh, the impact is low for one, low for a second, low for third, uh, high for fourth, and uh, medium for uh, fifth risk. So in this fashion, we can actually assess uh, the um, uh, characteristic of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, these uh, 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 risk we have identified in qualitative risk analysis. And then uh, over there, you can see a very interesting uh, picture. Uh, one piece has been taken out. What is the impact on overall? Uh, thing okay so the perform quantitative risk analysis process provides a numerical estimate of the overall effect of risk on objective of the project based on current plans and information when considering risk simultaneously so this is very important you are actually taking all the risk in one and integrating all the stuff and then you are having very good understanding if what how much impact that one risk will have on the overall objective of, uh, on the cost and time and quality and other objectives uh, we have specified. 
And then uh, there are two types of responses. One is, you know, kind of reactive. Other one is preventive. So uh, if first aid is, you know, kind of uh, uh, you are having first aid uh, to hold that thing available uh, is a preventive type of uh, thing. And then if uh, something has happened bad, so if all the project team is actually working over their heart to bring that fire under control, they are actually reacting to that. So the, pro, uh, the plan risk pro response process determines effective responses uh, that are appropriate to priority of the individual risk and to the overall project risk, okay? And then we have to bring and change that risk, uh, uh, okay? As far as negative risk are concerned, if that is a positive, then you do not want to uh, have uh, done that thing to risk. But uh, as far as our um, uh, consideration, uh, our uh, understanding is concerned, risk may be negative or positive, but for that we are actually uh, taking up negative risk as far as this picture is concerned. So the effectiveness of project risk management depends upon the way the approved plans are carried out. These plans should be executed correctly, reviewed, and updated regularly. So once you, you've done your risk management planning and you have this risk management plan uh, and that is, that is it, no, it is not. Uh, iterations are uh, the true sense of risk management. Okay, so uh, we have reached to the conclusion of uh, today's lecture. That was about uh, risk management on projects and framework. Um, we are going to uh, talk that risk management uh, in quite a detail in this, uh, uh, these few sessions we are having. As I've told you in the start that we are going to have uh, more consideration or focus on uh, risk and procurement part of uh, project management and now we have reached to that thing uh, so we are going to start risk management in quite a detail. So to, today we have talked about the definition of risk. Uh, risk management is you know increasing uh, or um, en enhancing the probability and or impact of uh, the positive events and uh, decreasing the probability and or uh, the impact of negative ones. So that is risk management. And uh, the application of risk management should be scaled to the project and individual and overall project risk. Uh, we have talked about the difference between them. Then stakeholders' attitude towards risk management was discussed. Uh, communication should be open and honest as far as risk management is concerned. Uh, risk management framework uh, was discussed, uh, uh, levels and thresh thresholds was uh, discussed and then uh, pro risk management processes, six of them was uh, very briefly uh, uh, high level uh, uh, discussion was made for them. So this is uh, for today and uh, mm, uh, we conclude our lecture with this end note that the surest way not to fail uh, is to determine uh, to succeed. Uh, so I say good luck, thank you and Allah Hafiz.